Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. How's everybody doing? I guess I'm doing all right. I'm having kind of a crappy week, but I'm okay. Uh, I've got some new villagers. I've been mostly just grinding with these guys. Impaling four for 23 emeralds. Loyalty one for 19. So these are two of the new uh, 1.13 enchantments. I've been trying to get more. I've been uh, swapping out. I've upgraded a few of my other guys. This, look at this. Oh, look at that. Punch two for eight. This, that's actually a fantastic price. I uh, don't need it too much, but you know, when I have to build a new bow, come in handy. I noticed I am, I've swapped to using these spruce uh, trapdoors for these guys. And I just, I realized I should just leave them in the carts. I go through so much trouble. I get them over here in the carts. I put them in and then they take them out of the carts. And then I have to lock them in with the trap doors. And then every now and then somebody comes over here and trying to trade. They open it up and I find a villager on the loose. <sighs> so, um, leave them in the, in the, the mine cart. They can't go anywhere. That'll be just fine. And the trap doors keep baby zombies from getting at them. The minecart might can I keep them from the baby zombies from getting at them. Who knows? I've got minecarts here, and then I've got the Axonal Iron Farm because we we spawn bunches of iron golems in here. And every now and then I'll be sitting here and just watching the villagers do their thing and trying to count how many there are. And I'll see attempted iron golem spawns. I'll see like three or three of them watch just pop and they'll appear for a tick and then disappear. It's really weird. Anyway. That's not the main point of what I'm doing today. A uh, couple things to show you. Made some uh, improvements over here. And um, <clears throat> sorry about my voice. I am, uh, that that's part of my interesting week. Um, I put in bubble column elevators right over here. Not exactly, they were intended to sort of be facing each other into a lobby. I've got a column hit blah, <sighs> of uh, ladders there that I need to get rid of but this one goes up and I love how fast this goes up and you don't have to do anything My hands are off the keyboard and I've got I can see outside kind of and I come up to the top here hey wrong key stop it Plop. yeah look at this and then this one takes me down the down goes quite a bit slower so I can actually from the dra down actually get down just one level Going up just one level is a little bit of a challenge unless it's going all the way up to the top. So I haven't extended this up to the outside yet. Anyway, let's, uh, oh, and I expanded this, my top floor here. Um, basically, I took my deep storage room, which was the one that went farthest this way, and I set that as the point for the elevators, and then I expanded floors over to them. I just wide, I just dug this way because, you know, this is where the bed was and all that so much more airy up here and i put some paintings to break up this wall of polished diorite which i don't mind as a block the polished especially anyway let's let's go over here and <clears throat> oh sorry i'm a little bit of a spaz so I didn't notice the beacons had new sounds. Let's go down to my turtle area. I didn't necessarily need to, but I haven't been down here in a little while. These guys haven't uh, haven't made too much progress, so maybe they have. Oh, I'm missing a couple eggs here, so I may have missed picking up some scutes. I need to build a little turtle scute farm. Because uh, this area is probably somewhat loaded when I'm up in my base. In fact, I think it is. So the turtles are probably doing their thing. Um, I do have 
some turtle scoots, scoots, whatever, how we pronounce it. It's kind of a little point here. Turtle scoots. I have some stuff to do with it. So I fished out a couple of loyalty books doing fishing loyalty three. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty good, but I don't need it because I have that loyalty guy. And I put my trident into the thing and got loyalty three on the enchant, which is pretty cool. I got impaling four and now that I have an impaling four dude, I was able to update this. So this is like super specced out trident. I need a few more though, because I want a riptide and a channeling. So let's, uh, I don't have an anvil down here. I really should. Let me fly back up home where I do have an anvil. So one of the new items in the game, you can craft by taking five of these skewed things and you get a turtle shell, which can be used as a crafting ingredient. And it can also be used as a helmet. It doesn't provide quite as much protection. It, the armor uh, rating is lower than uh, than the diamond helmet, but it gives you the extra benefit of having um, water breathing. You get like several seconds of water breathing in addition to what you might normally get. And the cool thing is that you can come here and put it in and then you can, oh, we can put it in enchanting table and get, you know, armor, armor enchantments. <clears throat> but I have, I put together this book that has, ooh, 32, but I have that. And we're going to make our turtle dome. So this will have, this will give me the water breathing. Plus I get, I'm breaking, mending, respiration, aquafinity, and protection, just like it were a, like it were a helmet. And this gives me plus two armor in addition to, and it glows, look at that. Yeah, so it's not quite as uh, fantastic as the uh, diamond helmet, but you know what? It'll have me underwater. So I may end up sort of wearing whichever one seems most appropriate. But look at that. It looks like an army man helmet. Like a, yeah, okay. Very cool. And it does provide armor protection. So why not? Why am I got so many? Whoops. Why am I, what, what? Well, oh, I've got, oh, it's giving me water breathing above ground. Interesting. So see, I got 10 seconds of water breathing. Speed of regen I'm getting from my beacon. That's where the swirlies are coming from. Cool. So between that and the respiration, which gives you a little bit even longer water breathing. This should be a very nice underwater helmet. And of course, if I'm around the the, uh, the underwater beacon or the conduit or whatever it's called, I get kind of infinite water breathing. I get through the conduit power. But if I swim out away from the conduit, I'll start getting water breathing, which is pretty cool. Hi, CODs. Apparently, there is some sort of weird... Uh, pathfinding bug with the cod and they don't uh, they don't really despawn and they uh, they they and I guess it's they try to uh, swim around each other and swim in a line and when they can't necessarily do that it becomes a little bit of a pain I miss her drowned Hi, nice. So anyway, I do like this new trident. Oh, I'm out of the conduit zone. Oh, there's another drowned right there though. There's a bunch of them. I need to keep, whoops. I need to keep fighting these guys so I can try and get more trident. Whoa. 
That's right, and it's a it's a melee weapon. Oh, it got dark out. So anyway, uh, as I said, I've been having kind of an interesting week. And I mean interesting in a kind of a ancient Chinese curse sort of way. Um, I was, Monday morning I was on my way to work. I was basically, I was a little bit early, earlier than usual. I was happy about that. And I was in the slow lane on the 134 West, which is a freeway here in Los Angeles. I was trying to get on the, the 5 freeway, which is the main freeway. This is the freeway where the off-ramp to my office is. And uh, um, so I... It was kind of slow and go. What is he? Oh, it's just a... Come back. Uh, it was, it was, it was kind of slow and go. We had stopped, or stop and slow, I guess you might call it. We had stopped, and uh, we were about to take. We were just accelerating, maybe gotten up to about 20 miles an hour. Which on the freeway, kind of sucks, but. Um, and I heard horn honk like a. Big horn hawk, like a big rig. Ooh, got him at a distance. Nice. Uh, like a big rig honking. And he, uh, and then I heard tires squealing, brakes and tires locking up. And it was, uh, it was bad. And so I, I didn't even bother to look. It was all behind me. I didn't look in my rear view mirror. I just wanted to focus on the road in front of me make sure that I wasn't about to hit somebody and uh, if I was basically a, I was gonna get in an accident I was gonna get in an accident and there wasn't much I was gonna be able to do about it so I went and uh, kind of got prepared and then and then it then I got hit oh this guy with the trident and Man, whoa, whoa, stupid dolphins. Don't give me dolphins grace when I don't want it. I'm gonna drop your trident. Does not look like it. Oh, getting away from mobs is nice with try great with the dolphins grace. So, anyway, then I got hit and my car spun around and. That was no fun. And I may have gotten hit twice. It's not entirely clear. Um, but the... When I... I As I said, I my car spun around. I went up over the divider that separates the freeway from the... Uh, oh, man. Way too far. Uh, from the sort of on-ramp collector road sort of thing. Uh, which... So when I'm going backwards on that, I'm basically in oncoming traffic, which is no good. Um, <clears throat> and... Oh, there's another Trident guy. Let's get rid of the weak guy first, okay? Oh, I hit him. He hit me. Oh, I'm in a little bit of trouble there. Oh, I don't want to die. Did he drop one? I can't tell. Okay, eat. Keep swimming. Eat. So anyway. Oh, I got a head of some sort there. Okay, we got the beacon power. Yes, I got another trident. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Eat. Uh, 
Okay. So, anyway, I got through the the on ramp traffic. People had slowed down. Slowed down. They they kind of saw the accident in progress, and uh, so I didn't hit any of them, fortunately, because that would have been a head on collision. Um, and uh, I I uh, kind of. steered the car once I sort of had my bearings again I was like okay I should you know maybe step on the brakes and steer the car off to the side of the road so I steered it up onto a uh, um, onto the embankment and then uh, put on the blinkers and then called my wife because I wasn't entirely sure what to do been in accidents before but this was a really bad one on the freeway and there were other cars involved. So, um, like it was, it was kind of a bad accident. So not entirely sure. So I called her and she called, uh, oh, I dialed her and then some guy came up to the side of, to the passenger side of the car, which was facing the road and asked me if I was okay, which was nice. He was either also involved in one of the other cars that was involved or he was uh, a witness who stopped which is very kind because it was very busy and I entirely wouldn't entirely uh, I don't know be surprised if people saw it and just kept on driving not sure oh baby turtle another egg just hatched um, so Anyway, wouldn't be surprised everyone trying to get, you know, get to work in the morning. They just, you know, stopped or just kept on going. I didn't really see it. So anyway, um, so that person came and checked on me. I was surprisingly like, I think I'm fine. I didn't remember. I didn't feel like I was hurt. I didn't feel like anything was broken. I didn't feel like I hit my head. The side curtain airbags in the car went off and that probably protected me quite a bit um i don't remember like the collision avoidance kicking in because there was nothing in front of me um of course all the alarms went off in the car at the time that it happened which is not entirely surprising uh so so it was all so it was all good i of course tried my driver's side door but it would not budge it would not open at all it was quite badly mangled i could tell and uh, so i had to crawl out through the passenger side the entire driver's side of the car was was peeled open like a can of sardines when you open it with the little key it's pretty bad and so hey baby turtle um <clears throat> Oh, do I have some seas kelp? I can make him grow up quickly. If I can get him out of there. Oh yeah, I've got plenty of seagrass. So anyway, uh, so the, the car was very badly damaged. Um, the front and the back were seriously misaligned. And, oops, hey, stop pushing the baby around. I don't, I know you want seagrass, but the baby needs it. The baby needs to grow. Um, so, you know, uh, so anyway, I realized I had doubted my wife. So she was listening in to me sort of talking and it sounded serious to her. So she was just like, oh, okay, I'll wait. So then I told her what had happened. She called the insurance company and we, uh, the guy who came to check on me said he had already called 911. So I just waited for the CHP to arrive, which they arrived within two minutes um, or at least the the highway uh, the highway um, collision people arrived within two minutes and the CHP came very shortly after that and they came and collected statements from everyone I didn't really talk to the other drivers much because I was I was feeling I was a little dazed petrified cod head interesting uh, I was feeling a little dazed so I was not um, well, it's petrified. So I, I didn't feel like I needed to go and collect insurance information from everyone because the cops were on their way. 
So anyway, the um, the driver of the big rig that was behind me in the slow lane did come over to talk to me. Um, he said that he was behind me and there was a brown pickup truck that was going like 50 miles an hour when we were doing like, you know, 20, uh, came over and cut him off, drove in, uh, tried to get into the space in between us and, um, and that was, uh, and so he had to, so he's the one that honked, sounded like a big rig horn and that he had to step on his brakes and he hit the the pickup truck and the pickup truck hit me that was sort of his experience or his story of what happened um seems plausible and all the damage to the rear driver's side rear of my car was all covered with brown paint and it was indeed a brown pickup truck so clearly the pickup truck did hit me i just don't know if the big rig hit me as well uh, because I don't know if the big rig was whoa okay oh there we go and server just take a little nap on me ah oh baby um <clears throat> another baby they swim faster just like the little babies run faster interesting uh, anyway, so since I didn't really see what happened, it was just kind of a, oh, he was carrying gold. Um, yeah, so I just, based on the truck driver's story, at least the brown pickup hit me. Maybe the, maybe the, uh, the big rig driver did as well. I don't know. Uh, anyway, the car was clearly in bad shape. My car was clearly in bad shape. And I, um... Uh, it was, I mean, the engine still ran, it was drivable, and there weren't fluids running all over the floor, all over the ground underneath it, which was surprising. And clearly, the, all the safety features on the car, the crushed areas, and the, and the space frame, the tubular space frame, all that stuff worked, because I did not get injured, which was fantastic. I was a little sore, my shoulder, my left shoulder was sore. Uh, and it has some scrapes on it. I think that's probably where the, the airbags went off. Um, and uh, my my left elbow was a little sore, which I probably the the door is it crushed somewhat. Probably I probably either the steering wheel tweaked it when it got turned around, or the door hit it a little bit. But it was sore for a day. And then a day later, my, my right hip was a little sore, but all that's gone. I'm feeling fine now, and it's, what, this is Thursday? That was Monday? So, quite miraculously, um, I am fine, which is great. Um, so, yeah, so anyway... Um, so that was that was my car accident. My insurance company has been fantastic. They got back to us right away, opened up the claim before we even towed the car anywhere. They told us to take it to their preferred uh, repair shop, where they where they sort of they're a trusted repair shop. So when they do um, when they do, they can do, the repair shop will do estimates and the insurance company doesn't have to send out inspect uh, adjusters, right, which can take a couple days. So they got a valuation, or they got an estimate on the repairs, like, right away. And, uh, and it was, it was, it was, the repairs were quite, uh, significant and it was clear that, uh, they were going to declare the the car total loss, which kind of expected. Um, but they went through and they did their evaluation, and the insurance company got back to me, and they're going to pay for everything. So, in fact, they're the, the 
they're going to pay off the the outstanding amount of the loan and i'm getting money back so i'm very happy with this whole situation um i obviously super lucky i could have it could have been so much worse and um i could have been seriously injured or killed there were about six cars involved in the wreck the chp called me back because they wanted additional information from me because they were having trouble piecing together what happened based on the statements because from the sounds of it the only person who gave them any actual like um you know any actual report on what happened was the big rig tri driver and there were some details of that that were not entirely um didn't i don't know didn't entirely make sense so um like it seems like maybe the truck might have might have hit me anyway even if the pickup truck hadn't been involved not entirely sure doesn't doesn't really matter so but then so as i said could have been so much worse uh, and then when i'm standing on the side of the road next to my destroyed car and figure out what to do i get a phone call from my neurologist i don't answer it it goes straight to voice it goes to voicemail and and she says why don't you give me a call so we can discuss the mri results um, i got an mri last week and you know basically i was going to get one later in the year anyway but since i've been not feeling great and having symptoms or maybe symptoms or pseudo symptoms not entirely clear over the summer uh, may have been just heat related it's hard to tell um we decided to move up the mri just kind of a routine mri and uh so we so i got that last week last last wednesday i think i went in for that and then uh, and normally, if there's nothing to talk about, uh, they don't even call me. So, <clears throat> the fact that I got a call saying, hey, we need to talk to you about this, uh, it's kind of a bad sign. So, so after I got took the car to the wrecking yard and... <laughs> um, <laughs> and... and uh, sort of talked with the chp and the insurance and all that good stuff um i went and uh i called back my neurologist and she was in with a patient oops did i get two out of that no i did not I must have broken one um so i called she was in with a patient but her reception was like yeah can you come in this afternoon <laughs> I'm like, I guess, but that means they found something and, and the reception is like, yeah, Dr. Hannah says, don't worry. <laughs> like, okay, great. So anyway, uh, so I, I have an appointment, I go in and yes, they found a new active, they found a new spot, it's small, but it's recent and it's active and uh, so it's not surprised that I'm not feeling symptoms, but if it would developed and grew further, I probably would. So, not great. Um, so that means treatment time, which MS is, is a, you know, it's a, it's a disease, there's no cure. And the only, the only effective treatment that they have for immediate flare-ups like this are uh, high doses of steroids. So... <clears throat> Oh, you're going to lay more eggs. Uh, so I've been... I've got several days of 1,000 milligram in, infusions of solumedrol, which is like the, the liquid version of prednisone. It's a very heavy-duty steroid. It's getting dark again. I might get some... Uh, I haven't slept in a bit here. I might get some... 
what do you call it? phantoms let's see if we can do that uh, so the so the solumed draw it's done through an IV it's 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 a it's a harsh steroid it's a heavy duty steroid and the idea is that it will basically put my uh, immune system sort of put the brakes on on my immune system and stop it from attacking my brain which is what it's doing right now which is no good so we'll uh we'll see I'm about uh, about halfway through those treatments and then after the iv inject infusions are done then the next uh the next step is i have to take oral tablets uh as a as a taper as a step down so that i don't just go off the heavy duty dose of steroids cold turkey because that can create some interesting problems so so anyway i'm uh the uh the steroids have weird effects um i get super sweaty especially at night when i'm sleeping uh, i have not been sleeping well uh i get short-tempered and irritable a roid rage is a real thing um let's see if i can do this without attacking a turtle and uh yeah and uh my voice is starting to go these are all sort of normal steroid side effects they'll be with me i'm not supposed to spend time out in the sunlight and i'm not entirely sure where that why that is the only answer i've been given is it has something to do with increasing my risk of infection so um so when I'm, I'm kind of been going in like half days at work just so I don't have to take sick days because I don't have very many. Um, and uh, but if I do, if somebody there is sick, I will leave because I cannot like if I got the flu right now and people are starting to it's starting to turn into flu season. If, if, if I got the flu right now, uh, it could be really bad. Like it could be life threatening for me because my immune system is taking a nap. But anyway, so that's been my week. I, my, I but I have a new fancy turtle helmet, and I've got uh, I've got some more scutes that I can fashion. I think the scutes have to be fashioned into turtle into turtle helmets, and those get turned into the potion of turtle master potions, which not the most. Um, appealing potion in the world because it makes you super slow but if i can put that onto a tipped arrow that might be a fun prank or put turn into a lingering potion and booby trap somebody's no i would never do that especially not anybody who might be listening to this video anyway so there we go um come on lay the eggs already so that's it that's been my week I have a couple episodes kind of in the can at this point, so this this won't come out for a few weeks. I should be off the, the steroids by the time anyone sees this. And again, all this could be really bad. I could be having serious MS symptoms, which I am not. Um, and I could be seriously injured and or, you know, dead, which I am not. So the car, that car saved my life. And I'm trying to see if um i'd very much like to over the weekend uh go get a new car because i had and see if i can get the the finance people to take my incoming uh payment from the insurance company since i have a letter from them saying that it is on its way uh take that as my down payment and give me terms that were basically what i had on the old car that would be that would be kind of ideal so i may be driving the 2019 version of the car i was driving which has even better safety features and i'm very excited about that so anyway that's that the and my my bubble column elevators which you can see right there where they go upside that has really made the oh let's, let's put these turtle eggs away that has made getting around inside my base a lot more fun a lot more convenient 
I'm gonna make it. Nope. Ooh. Uh, so that's uh, so that's fun. But basically, I've been doing this and and uh, working on developing more villagers so I can get all the new enchants. That is the, the basic plan. Um, so there we go. Uh, oh, and I guess the last thing I already talked about this, I think. But the, the MS Walk uh, fundraiser for 2018 is over. And I ended up raising $3,001. Uh, thanks to very generous donations uh, from family and friends and complete strangers. Everyone's been fantastic. It was way more than, not way more, it was more than my wildest dreams. Um, I was kind of hoping, like my... My goal was, my initial goal was like, I'm going to raise $2,000 this year. And it ended up being 3000 which was fantastic. It put me in the top 40. I think I'm number 38 individual fundraiser for the LA area. And LA is one of the bigger chapters. So last year I was like number 160 something uh, nationwide. So I expect I'll be moving up that scale as well. We'll see just how far when I get my walk materials for next year, next spring. Um, so that's that's very exciting. And of course, it isn't a competition. Um, all, all the money that all the people have raised is fantastic. It's all going to the same place. Um, and there's no... The only, the only benefit... Oh, they're all hiding it over here this time. That's interesting. Um, the only real benefit to... The money going under being raised at, at my sort of part of my name is I get the bragging rights. There's still a bunch of guys over here. Six in here, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay, we're starting to get to uh we're approaching the cap. I can probably safely clear out some of these guys, like the nitwit. But anyway. So that's all super exciting. The I believe the 2018 fundraiser year is over. And I should soon be able to set up my 2019. I should be able to register for next year's walk and set up my campaign for my campaign fundraiser page for that, which I will do. Um, I won't probably won't start uh, promoting that until we get closer to the walk. And I have some other plans for doing fundraising outside of the walk itself. So um I, I need to figure a couple things out but i should be able to do that and that should be uh very good so yeah so i think that's it um i'm slightly paying playing hooky from work right now i was in uh i got a i got an infusion thing this morning and i ran a couple errands and mob farm seems to be stopped um yeah, ran a couple errands got some food probably gonna go i have a couple things to do at the office and i need to make a couple calls and whatnot so yeah it's don't oh know it's not stuck it's just in between cycles very nice so anyway that's it i think i'm rambling um i think that's it for now Thank you for watching. This is Theron. It's my Minecraft LAN party. And I'm still alive. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.